Hi, good day everyone. I'm Richelle Oxiano and I'm going to present to you a topic about how your brain learns, remembers, and improves memory skills. Here are some subtopics that I'm going to discuss in my video. The first one is what happens inside your brain, brain-friendly ways to learn better, how homework helps our brain, how emotions affect learning and memory, and some memory techniques but i'm going to ask you first a question what happens inside your brain when you learn something new okay you can answer it on your own but uh, this is our brain and According to science, brain cells are called neurons. You are born with at least 100 billions of neurons. Dendrites are the fibers grow out of the neurons when you listen to write about, talk about, or practice something. Learning is natural. Neurons know how to grow dendrites just like a stomach knows how to digest food. Learning is equal to or equivalent to growth of dendrites. New dendrites take time to grow. It takes a lot of practice for them to grow. Here is the connections formed between neurons. When two dendrites grow close together, a contact point is formed. A small gap at the contact point is called the synapse. Messages are sent from one neuron to another as electrical signals travel across the synapse. Practice builds strong connections. Special chemicals called neurotransmitters carry the electrical signal across the synapse. When you practice something, it gets easier for the signals to cross the synapse. That's because the contact area becomes wider and more neurotransmitters are stored there. Practice builds faster connections. When you practice something, the dendrites grow thicker with a fatty coating of myelin. The thicker the dendrites, the faster the signals travel. The myelin coating also reduces interference. Practice builds double connections. With enough practice, the dendrites build a double connection. Faster, stronger double connections last a very long time. You remember what you learned. Short memory is very short. If you learn something new and do it only once or twice, the dendrite connection is very fragile and can disappear within hours. Within 20 minutes, you remember only 60%. Within 24 hours, you remember only 30%. But if you practice within 24 hours and then practice again later, you remember 80% of it. Make the most of practice time. You grow dendrites for exactly the same thing you are practicing. If you listen or watch while math problems are solved, you grow dendrites for listening or for watching. If you actually solve the problems yourself, you, go dend you grow dendrites for solving. The dendrites this toddler is growing are for what skill or concept? What are the most important points for you to remember? So here are the most important points for, for you to remember. There are six major points to remember. The first major point You are naturally, naturally smart because your brain knows how to grow dendrites just like your stomach knows how to digest food. Think about a baby who learned to speak in its native language without any special classes or training. Here is major points number two. 
you must do something active. Say, for instance, explain, solve, draw, write, or other activities in order to learn. Because dendrites grow only when you are actively doing something. No one else can grow dendrites for you. The next major point is dendrites cannot grow in a void. They can only grow, new dendrites can only grow off of what is already there. New skills must connect to and grow off of previously, of previously learned skills. If you do not have the necessary dendrites in place, new material will seem to go right over your head. So start with a math course that matches your skill level. Major points number four is dendrites takes time to grow because it takes a lot of practice for dendrites to grow. This is why you do homework. This is why Trying to cram everything into your brain the night before a test doesn't work. The next major point is mistakes with feedback are essential and good because making mistakes and getting feedback so you can correct them allows you to check the accuracy of the connections in your brain. Be sure to get feedback quickly so you don't practice the wrong thing and build a strong but wrong connection. The last major point is emotions affect learning and memory. Let's see how it works. What can emotions do to you? Anxiety floods your body with adrenaline. Either we fight or we flight. Adrenaline makes it hard for the neurotransmitters to carry messages across the synaps synapses in your brain. That causes blanking out on a test. How can emotions help you? Endorphins makes you feel calm. Your body produces endorphins when you relax, exercise, laugh, or learn new things. If you practice producing calming hormones, it will help you when you are under stress. So what does all this mean for me? Let us use dendrite theory to answer these questions. I understand what's going on in the lecture just fine, but when I get home and start on the homework assignment, why am I lost? I attend class and do all the homework and feel like I understand everything. Then why do I just blank out on the test and can't do anything? So, can you answer these questions also? Why should I do all this homework? It's just the same thing over and over. I work full-time. Can I do homework only on weekends and still pass the course? More questions. I've been absent for a week, but there's a test tomorrow. Can I cram it all in tonight? Why can't I take this math course even if I haven't passed the prerequisite course or gotten a high enough score on the placement test? So here are the answers to those questions. First is, start with the right math course. The skills build from one course to the next. Take the rest of your math course one at a time in order. Do some of the homework as soon as possible after class before you forget. Try to practice math every day. To manage anxiety, learn simple relaxation techniques such as slow, deep breathing. Make sure you are actively doing something when you study. Say, for instance, make study cards, draw pictures or diagrams, solve lots of problems, and check your answers. Check your understanding by explaining how to do a problem to another student. Create a practice test for yourself. Work it in the same amount of time you'll be given in class. 
just enjoy using our brains. Now, let us move on with my next topic, which is improving memory skills. Yes. In memory process, there are five steps that we need to know. The first one is the intention. It is a desire to learn and remember. The next one is attention. Observing information, concentrating on details. The third one is association. Organize and associate data. The fourth one is retention, which is practice. And the last one is recall. We need to remember, teach, and share information. There are six types of memory. We have the mindfulness, the short term, the long term, registration, retention, and retrieval. When we say mindfulness, it is the state in which you are totally in the moment and a part of the process. The next one is short term. It is also called our active memory, while the long term is called our passive memory. Registration, it means taking information from our senses. Retention, brain's ability to remember information that is actively in use. And when we say retrieval, it is the ability of the brain to locate and use information. Here are some memory strategies in order to improve our memory skill. First is write it down. Go from the general to specific, reduce information, eliminate distractions, study in short sessions, use our senses, say for instance, visualize, listen, and move. Use mnemonic devices or memory tricks, say for instance, rhymes and rhythms, acronyms, first letters from a series of words, Acrostics are sentences to help you remember letters. Then association, chunking or grouping of information, stacking technique like visualize objects and stack, method of place technique like mapping or using imagery and association to aid in memory. The next strategy is to recite. It means to repeat information. And we can also use note cards. And the last strategy is just practice, more practice, of course. So that's all for my uh, video presentation. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.